Hey everybody, it's Timothy here with Mana Rocks, and we get to start drafting Ravnica Allegiance now. So we get to look at Judith on our screen instead of that weird League, league Guild Mage picture with the Niv Mizzen in the background. But anyway, I digress. Uh, this is going to be my first um, arena draft of Ravnica Allegiance. We're not going to do by force for a while. I want to get a feel for the format. That's something for when the format's ripe and everybody kind of knows what's going on with it. By force was a fun way for me to kind of deviate from the normal drafts, but. We are going to do a traditional draft, so up to two losses or up to five wins. And I have so far, for context, played um, two drafts, one on Arena, one in person. Um, and then, well, it was it was a best of one on Arena, the free one you get with your uh, pre-release kits. And then I've done three sealeds, two of which were two at a giant, so those aren't particularly good for measuring the format, just kind of give you a little bit of a feel of the cards. But I don't have quite um, an idea of what I think any of the better or worse guilds are, so I've still got to get a feel for that, having not played very much. But we're going to go ahead and jump in and be open-minded here and see what we can put together. Unfortunately, we opened a commander card. <laughs> for our rare um there's probably some deck where this is cool i think I, at least once i would like the opportunity to draft this plus the uh the green destroy all artifacts or enchantments and make a um centaur for each one but i don't know overall this pack looks kind of weak i'm not a huge fan of azorius coming out the gates but i do think senate guild mage is quite good and then uh skewer the critics oh got a little bit of lag going on here Give it a second. Um, as I was saying, Skewer the Critics, I think, is very good and might be my pick here. And then also, Soroform Hybrid is probably one of the better two drops. There are a ton of two drops in this set for what it's worth. Final Payment, also quite nice here. But I am think I'm going to just take the Skewer. Um, splash Bowl Removal, if we want it to be. And uh, seems just very good as it is. For the next pack, um, and I will probably be talking a lot more about the cards for the first couple drafts than I will for later drafts. Uh, all three of the uncommon stand out to me. I think Essence Capture is the worst of the three. It's a little awkward. Um, two mana Essence uh, essence Scatter, essentially, but you get to put a 1-1 counter on a creature. Although if you're in Simic, you might not want to, since uh, it shuts off your ability to adapt. There's another Skewer here, but Trollbred Guardian seems really good. Um, five mana, 5-5 five, five with Adapt 2 for three mana, and each creature you control with a counter on it has Trample which is gross. Also, Imperious Oligarch, very nice. And then Orzhov Enforcer just basically forces your opponent to do something with it at some point, and then you get the uh, um, the token, the afterlife token, right? So if I had a strong preference, um, I could go one way or, or the other, since Trollbird Guardian leads me down Gruul, and Orzhov Enforcer leads me down Rakdos, and the Skewer just keeps me in red. I think I am going to take the Trollbred Guardian. I think it's the strongest card out of that pack, but I'm not 100% sure. Following that up, we have Cry of the Carnarium, which is good. Um, this card's good, but there are a lot of just gigantic creatures in this format, so minus two, minus two, you can't rely on being a sweeper, although it'll probably be really good against Rakdos, which makes it even more awkward since you're probably Rakdos half the time you're playing this card. There's uh, Incubation, Incongruity, which is just okay. Incubation lets you look at the top five and put a creature in your hand, but the fact that it can't hit lands makes me like this card a little bit worse, or a little bit less. And then Incongruity is just pretty poor removal that you can use. It's not the worst removal, but it's not very good either. So my picks are between, I guess, the Incubation and the two drop, and I think I'm just going to take the two drop. This card's really good. Also, Simic Guildgate and a Gateway Plaza, but I will pick up the Sorrowform Hybrid. Follow that up with possibly another Sorrowform Hybrid. Unfortunately, this pack looks a little bit on the weak side. Rubble Belt Recluse is probably really strong. And then Carnival Carnage is probably just okay. Um, Carnage is a good card. It's Blightning for four mana instead of three, and Carnival can pick off one toughness creatures, but this is more of a spectacle enabler than anything else. So far, my only Spectacle card doesn't really need to be enabled for it to be good. I think I'm just going to pick up another one of these two drops. Um, I don't really want anything else here. I mean, the 6-5 seems good to me, but I'm not going to take it at that moment. Uh, another pack with some cards I don't care for. Rubble Reden is an unplayable. Act of Treasons probably at its best in Rakdos. There is a Wrecking Beast, which is a huge finisher, right? 
You take one of these, you don't really need to prioritize too many other finishers, and I think Mammoth Spider ends up being good in this format too. I'm not sure about this 7 drop here, and consigned to the pit is really weak removal, but uh, it does the trick. I'd rather not play Bush Strider given the choice, so I am going to pick up the first Wrecking Beast, and we'll have two really good late game creatures. Um, we've got a Gruel card here. It's a 3 mana 3 3 that can't be blocked by tokens. Uh, nothing super exceptional, but a decent body. Gift of Strength. Fine combat trick. Mammoth Spider again. I wouldn't mind having one. And then I think people are maybe overrated Burn and Tree Vandal a little bit. Neither mode has a very good body. Um, and you get a rummage off of it. But trading off and getting a rummage isn't exactly something I'm super excited about. And playing this as a 2-1 kind of sucks too. Scuttle Gator. I think Scuttle Gator actually just sucks. So I'm going to take 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. And then follow up with either a 3-4... A Rakdos Guildgate to kind of hedge a little bit. Or a 5-2 for 4 that you can play for cheaper if you spectacle it out. Um, so far we're on all creatures and a skewer. This card gets a lot better the more removal you have, but it's not really like amazing or anything. Axbane Beast is possibly even better than Spike Wheel Acrobat. And there is a chance I end up like not, may, maybe being like Simic splashing red or something like that. So I think I am going to actually just take the green creature here. Follow up with Gruel Guildgate, pretty easy. Some graveyard hate cards. There, there's a good num amount of graveyard hate in this format. And I have no idea why they reprinted Scrabble and Claws, but there, there's no guild that has a graveyard based mechanic. So it's kind of awkward. Um, these cards just really don't do anything. Blade Brand's really cool with some number of creatures, uh, mainly Footlight Fiend and the Dagger Caster guy, but Guildgate here. Alright, this decent 2-drop, Gravel Hide Goblin, is a 2-mana two 2-1 two, that pumps 4-4. Four, four. Uh, just fine. It is a X-1, so it doesn't really be everything, but you can usually trade it off. Alright, and we have our choice on the wheel of the 6-5 that has to attack, or the 3-5, so... Slightly more defensive card or slightly more aggressive card. I think I'm just going to take the Recluse and probably wheel the other Mammoth Spider. Alright, I think I'll take Simic Guildgate here over the split card. I don't, I don't even like the second half of this that I'd be splashing, so I'll take something that might let me splash like a Zagana or something. Uh, and along those lines, I'll just take another one. I don't think you really need Deface. Alright, Bush Strider can fill out the curve when we need it. Get, these are both, I think, decent combat tricks. Storm Strike is plus one plus oh, first strike and scry one, and then Gift of Strength is just straight up plus three plus three. I think of the two, I'd rather have the first Gift of Strength. And Rubble Renin. Alright, ooh, I really want to play with this card, but unfortunately we're not in a deck for it. You sack two other creatures, your opponent sacks a creature, loses two life, and then you draw a card and get black, black. It just does a lot of stuff. I don't think Regenesis is very good, although I'll probably play the first copy most of the time. Aramunculus is good, but I'm just going to take another skewer here. Titanic Brawl is probably pretty good in my deck as well, since I have quite a few just big beefy creatures, but I'm going to take skewer, which is going to be more reliable removal. Cavalcade of Calamity, I don't think is very good at all. Open the Gates is a lot better if I'm splashing. And then there's Chillbringer, which I would probably splash for Chillbringer. This card is great. Just a Frost Titan, or not Frost. <laughs> I mean, it's a mini, mini Frost Titan. Get the point, also pretty splashable, but I'm more likely to splash blue than I am red. Hmm, alright, this is one of those cards I'm going to have to reread every single time I see it because it's worded so weirdly. Basically, when it comes into play, um, your opponents can't block with creatures that have less power uh, <laughs> than the total number of counters you have on your creatures. So it's supposed to play really well with Riot, although I don't think we have that many actual Riot creatures, right? Root Snare sucks. Sag Sagittar? Sagittar's Volley is okay as a sideboard card. And there's Rubble Slinger, Steeple Creeper, Aramunculus are all fine. I might just take Rubble Slinger here. Steeple Creeper is kind of, I think, a better version of that um, Acrobatist or whatever it's called. Aramunculus is clearly better on the blue, but we're not really blue and we don't necessarily have to even play blue. So Aramunculus on turn like six is not as good. I think I'm going to take Steeple Creeper over Rubble Slinger here. Ooh, Blood Artist. Hey, hey. All right, this is an actual payoff for being in Gruul. 
uh, it's basically <laughs> Savage Punch, but you get the Ferocious no matter what. Plus two, plus two, and fight. Um, there's some starts where you play out your, you know, two, three drop, you do this, and you're just jamming for so much damage. I wouldn't mind another Rubble Bell or another Gravel Hide, so um, hopefully one of those comes back, but Savage Smash is kind of a perfect card for our deck. Again, one of our payoffs for being in Gruul. Uh-oh. Okay, I was going to say, that's not good. Let's not do all that now. All right, Wilderness Reclamation, I feel I should talk about. This card, I believe, is virtually unplayable and maybe only playable in Simic. And even in Simic, it's not good. I think people see this sort of thing. They think of cards like Seedborn Muse or uh, they think about what it can do in Constructed and they don't really stop to consider that in Limited. You know, a card has <laughs> has to affect the board or has to get immediate value. Um, has to actually do something. And there are cases where you play this and it does absolutely nothing. So I don't think I'll ever be drafting Wilderness Reclamation, but if I do, you can come back and tell me about it later on. There's Geyer Engineer, which is obviously really good, but again, blue is not a primary color for us, so a little bit sad we're probably passing up on that. And that leaves us with another Rubble Belt Runner or the first Mammoth Spider, and I think we're just going to take the three Mammoth 33. Again, I like Mammoth Spider, but I'd rather have some middle um, of the pack creatures. Looks like Arena is really just struggling here. Ooh, here's that card I was talking about, Dagger Caster. Probably fine on its own. Four mana, two, three that deals one damage to each of your opponent's creatures and one damage to them. There's another Sora Farm Hybrid. I think I actually like Titanic Brawl in our deck. We've got some pretty big creatures. There's only so many fight effects I like. We've already got three two drops, so another Sora Farm Hybrid seems a little sketch. I think there's a limit to how many adapt creatures you can put in. Kind of like with the level up, they are so mana intensive that you're never getting to the point where, you know, you play one, adapt one, play one, adapt one. Um, Dagger Caster is cool and all, but I think I just want the removal spell here. Oh, Frilled Mystic. Ah, I love this card, but can't play it here. So I'll take Scorchmark. Good early game removal. Not much to talk about there. Oh, Wilderness something. Reclamation. Uh, I feel like we literally just saw this pack. Um, I'm going to take... I don't really want another Gift of Strength. I'm not going to play... I guess I'll take something I might end up playing, so I'll, I'll put the Gyre Sage in the sideboard. All right, Regenesis came back, but I'll take Gruul Guildgate here. Cavalcade is very bizarre. Um, Deface and Open the Gates. Open the Gates could give us a pretty easy splash here for Simic. And I kind of want to play the Chillbringer, so I'll take that. Deface is an okay sideboard card against defenders, but there's only so many defenders I care about. We'll take Sagittar's Volley here. Sagittar's? I don't know. Volley. Ooh, look, Mammoth Spider. Or do we want Gravel Hide? I'm going to take Mammoth Spider. And good sign that these are all coming. Um, Goblin Gathered is pretty bad. Even, I think, the second Goblin Gathering is pretty poor. Ooh, exposed to daylight. All right, and then going into the last pack, we have a pretty weak pack, unfortunately. Pestilence Spirit is really cool, even if you kind of ignore the instant sorcery part, since that's not going to come up too, too often. It's just really strong. 3-2, Menace, Death Touch for 3 is good. Um, Essence Capture, there's no way we're playing. Cerulean Caretaker is really bad. Prion Eyes and Skitter Eel aren't cards I'm looking to splash. We could play Footlight Fiend, but... Kind of whatever. So we're between an Axe Bane Beast and the 7 drop. 7 mana is a lot. I, I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, but <laughs> 7 mana is a lot. However, I think this card is fine. I don't think it's a bomb, but I'm probably going to take it because the rest of the pack sucks. We don't need multiple 7 drops in our deck, though. Here's another Skewer. Here's a Rumbling Ruins. There's a Wrecking Beast. I, I would probably even consider a Gruel Locket for this deck, but we're already going to have to make cuts as it is. Ooh, Fireblade Artist is really sweet. Also has some really sick art. But I'm going to take Skewer. Skewer is so good. Ooh, Gatebreaker Ram. I don't think I have enough gates to really make that work. I have four. Gatebreaker Ram might just be the pick here. And if I can pick up one more gate, I'm actually really happy with it. Especially having open the gates. Um, I'm not really playing anything else here. So yeah, I'll pick up Gatebreaker Ram. Even if you have one gate, it's three mana, three, three, which is pretty good. Oh, there we go. Collision Colossus. This is just a devastating combat trick. 
and uh, gives you main deckable flying destruction hate. Kind of awkward, too, that Collision can take down the Sphinx, since it's a uh, multicolor card. <laughs> um, lots of these hybrids going around. If I can get the hybrid or the guild gate back, I'll be pretty happy. I don't expect that to happen, but we're definitely taking that Collision Colossus. Here's a Beastmaster. This card's pretty sweet. Looks really well with Collision Colossus. Um, I think a lot of times you're incentivized to put a 1-1 counter. I think the thing that I don't like about this is the art is really just over-the-top computer-generated, and I don't like it. It kind of looks like... kind of reminds me of Ice Age. But I'm going to have to forego that. Wow, Rhythm of the Wilds? So this is a card I might just be overrating. Because it doesn't do anything on its own, right? And I don't think counter spells are going to be as important in this format as they were in the previous set. But Rhythm of the Wild is so sweet. If you're not under that much pressure, just everything coming down with haste or having a counter on it is really nice. And Riot does stack. If I cast a creature with Riot, which I have like maybe one of, two of, then uh, it, it gets Riot twice, essentially. So I will take Rhythm of the Wild. High alert. <laughs> this was one of the decks I drafted. Um... In fact, my only in-person draft I've done so far was a high alert deck, and it was insanely good. Uh, Combine Guild Mage is awesome. Might take the Territorial Boar. I think the Goblin's going to be better most of the time. I don't really need more two drops. I don't want Spike Will Acrobat. I guess I could take Simic Guildgate. Hmm. I'm just going to take the Boar. Ooh, another Gate Breaker Ram. Or do I want Gruul Locket? I'm just going to take this Ram. And a whole bunch of stuff we don't really care about. There are some matchups where 3-4 is going to be really good, though. Alright, Gruul Locket. Feral Maka is a card I hope I never have to put in a deck. Another Mammoth Spider. Got a lot of action against Flyers. Unfortunately, the Gates aren't really coming back. I have already got three of these in my sideboard, or at least one extra. So I'm actually going to take this card that <laughs> cares about you having a bunch of them. Uh, Simic Locket? Nah. Maka. Alright, we did not wield... Oh, okay, never mind. We wield one Guildgate. Hmm. So we've got pretty easy blue splash here, but probably only one blue card we're wanting to play. I'm wondering if I play, like, a guy or Engineer, though. This gives us so much mana. Problem, of course, being that you want to cast that early. Uh, things that stand out right away. I don't want two Gift of Strengths. I'm not even sure I want the first one when I picked up Colossus. I just don't want that many combat tricks. I don't want Bush Strider. Um, Alright, let's get rid of Gift of Strength number two. Gatebreaker Ram should be pretty good. Alright, let's not play the Geyer Engineer. Let's get rid of Axbane Beast. And then... Lots of really expensive creatures. I think I'll cut Mammoth Spider and keep it in the board, but we do have two Mammoth Spiders to bring in. This leaves us with two 7-drops and three 5-drops, which is quite a bit, right? Maybe I don't play the Sphinx? Hmm. Kind of weird, the Sphinx. I'm, oh no, never mind, it's Hexproof, not like Protection. Um, I guess I could cut like a Locket plus Sphinx, right? I think Wrecking Beast is already a good finisher, and the haste on it matters a lot. I think the Sphinx is like the finisher I get when I don't really want to play it. I guess we're reconnecting here. Alright, we're back. Uh, I had a slight internet hiccup there that disconnected me for a moment. Um, so, I did cut the Sphinx. Um, I think just my creatures are pretty good size as it is. I don't think I need one more super expensive spell here. And then I'm going to cut the island, and I'm wondering if I actually am supposed to play 16 lands and open the gates, since I all of these are green. I think I'm going to do that. This is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 green sources. Um, that only gives me 6 red sources, though. Alright, well, we're definitely going to go down a couple. Let's see here. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 green sources, which is really good in my opinion. And then 6, 7, 8... Red sources. Uh, I guess that means I'm actually supposed to put another card in, though. Maybe a Gift of Strength? Maybe a Gruul Locket? Kind of awkward to put a Gruul Locket in a deck that you already cut uh, land from. Or I guess I could just play 17. I don't have a lot of card draw or anything, though. So whenever I get a chance to cheat on lands, I prefer to do so. 
However, might not be right to do that. All right, I'll go and play the locket here. I have a couple five drops that are worth getting to, uh, towards. In fact, quite a few five drops. And then the Wrecking and Beast. Plus, it gives me some light game action, which is nice. I kind of wish it was a Simic locket, actually. But anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it. We ended up in Gruel, um, for better or worse. I think we've got some decent payoff cards here. So we'll see how it works, and hopefully we don't play against any super aggro decks. But that's going to go ahead and do it for our first uh, Ravnica Allegiance draft. So thanks for joining me here on Mana Rocks. See you in round one. And round one is up. Uh, we are on the draw here. I think this hand's pretty good. This ram's going to come down as a 3-3, and if we can find one more gate by the time we're ready to attack with it, it'll be a 4-4. Plus we have the skewer here to take care of a creature we really need to. So on the draw, I like this a lot. Do need two more lands to cast our five drops, but they are pretty impactful here. Opponents mulling and keeping on top. We are against Magavin. I do expect a lot of people early on in the format to be drafting Rakdos, since all-in aggro is kind of a easy thing to draft, I think. Not that that's bad. I'm, I'm not um, necessarily saying my opponent shouldn't be drafting Rakdos. In fact, Rakdos seems like it's going to be really strong. But... That's just my expectation here. So 1-3 Menace means that if my opponent has cards worth spectacle and out, they're going to definitely have a chance here. Even if I did draw a 2-drop there, which I didn't, this card's going to get some damage in. Not too worried about the activated ability, but if they play like a Blade Juggler or something here, it's going to be pretty annoying. If we draw a Gate, I'm probably just going to play Gate, uh, gate Breaker Ram. I wonder if I'm supposed to just skewer that thing right away or try and trade a creature off. I think the ram is the best three drop I have. Might just play steeple creeper. Problem is if they have like a scorch mark or something, they get to just kill my creature for free. So I'll play a 3-3 and attempt to block Spike Wheel Acrobat. Hopefully they don't have I guess they could have like a skewer the critics or something. I mean there's a lot of removal in black and red, so I'm probably gonna take this hit, but they'll be down a card. Could also just not have removal, but we'll see what happens. If they attack with the Spike Wheel Acrobat... Ooh, that, that card is not something I'm worried about. Thurston Shade seems really bad to me. They might not attack with the 5-2 here. And they choose not to. Costs 4 mana to pump. Okay. I will, I will certainly trade here. Or at least trade for a uh, combat trick of some sort. And then another card to follow up with? No. All right, so hoping we drew another gate there, but we didn't. So I guess I'm kind of looking at which creature we're most likely to want to trade off next. And um, I don't really want to give him a free attack with the Thurston Shade. So I think I'm just supposed to play the Ram here. I don't think I need to skewer. Alternatively, if I play like... Steeple Creeper and they attack, they have to use three mana just to trade off. Um I'm kind of anticipating them having Scorch Mark though. Just seems like a, a, a common that our opponent should have pretty large amount of the time. For those who don't know, Skewer is a sorcery, so we're not too worried about them tapping out. Phone's going off. What I am not worried about is Thirsting Shade. The pump on this is just way too much. This is a one drop that I presume is in the set so that you can probably sneak in a damage and then spectacle. Carnage. All right, so we're going to take three and discard two cards. Um, I'm going to get rid of... I kind of like both the five drops here. I don't love the creature that has to attack every turn. So I think I'm going to get rid of one of the five drops because there's no way I can use both of those next turn. And then um, I guess Steeple Creeper is just better than the boar. However, if I draw a land next turn, I'm probably just casting a five drop anyway. So we'll get rid of the boar here. Take three to the face. We got Blightning. It's fine. I'm going to go down to 14 this turn. Guildgate would be nice. All right, basic. I mean, that's fine, too. So 
I highly doubt they're going to be able to deal with this 5-5, so I'm going to go ahead and attack. My opponent's going to take it, and then I'll play Trollbred Guardian. I say my opponent's probably going to have trouble dealing with it, but they could just have a fifth land and the Rakdos destroy a creature. We'll see. There's there's some tricks and pumps that I'm not really thinking of. If that's all my opponent does, though, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because next turn I can adapt, attack with both, and have Skewer up to kill this. And then just have a 1-1. One, one. It does look like my opponent has some number of, like, 5 mana spells in their hand. Also, the Guild Gate was really good there, too. Alright, so we're going to jam with both. The Gate Breaker Ram now has Trample and Vigilance. Uh, yeah, I'm going to adapt. This will have Trample now as well, so we've got 11 damage coming in all of a sudden. Opponent's going to be at 7. And then I'll just play... Oh, I guess I... Yeah, I guess I should tap myself there. I feel like we're going to see 5 mana, destroy target creature, and scry 1 here. Otherwise I have lethal? Okay. Or we can uh, just steal the game here. Interesting. So against a super aggressive Rakdos deck, Bush Strider is probably fine. Bush Strider is actually probably better than like Steeple Creeper here, just because the two life might matter. The Axebane Beasts get a lot better, I think, which actually <laughs> just might be better than the Bush Strider anyway. Um, Rhythm of the Wild gets a little bit worse, I think, because I'm going to be more defensive. And then our top end creatures get. A significant amount worse. I, I might actually cut Rubble Belt Recluse here. I don't want a creature that has to attack. Cut the Locket. Bring in like Bush Strider, Axe Bane Beast, and a Mammoth Spider, I suppose. Maybe I just want two Axe Bane Beasts. Yeah. Not expecting too many flyers here. Yeah, that seems fine. So lower the curve a little bit, bring in more high toughness creatures rather than high power creatures. See how it works. Alright, this is an awkward hand. We're on the draw again. Um, the beasts are probably going to stabilize really well, so if our opponent just doesn't have like some sick curve out, then we're probably fine. Also, that was a decent draw. I don't think Collision Colossus is going to be at its best here, but it can take out like a surprise flyer or something. My opponent has like some big bomb flyer. Ooh, no one or two drop is really nice. So, a pretty easy turn. I get to play the 2 2 and then pass if it gets scorch marked, and so be it. My opponent has something here due to the pausing. Not scorch mark, it doesn't look like. Okay, the there's the thirstiest shade of them all. Alright, we'll go and play the guild gate and just ship the turn here. Yeah, I would rather block, make sure they can't spectacle. If they use a burn spell, I'm just going to let it happen. I don't think I'm supposed to trade Colossus for a burn spell. But I can pretty freely block here, and if they try to do anything, Colossus has a good chance of saving my creature. Vindictive Vampire is nice. Whenever a creature they control dies besides the vampire, it drains me for one. Doesn't mean they're not attacking, though, and I get to start dropping some 3-4s. Also, our gate uh, keeper rams or whatever are online when we draw them. Speak of the devil. Uh, I wonder if that... Yeah, that's probably just better than the beast now. It lets me get this guild gate down, and it actually adds a 4-4 four, four that attacks very well rather than a vanilla 3-4. Yeah, that, that seems like a good bet to me. Get to drop this 5-5 five, five next turn. I like being uh, in this position here at 20 life, having good plays coming down. At the very worst, I'm going to add power to the board every single turn, I believe. Would be interested to see an attack here. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm not going to Savage Smash into open mana here. If I attack with the Gate creep, Keeper Ram, they could double block and pump. I'm, I'm going to make that attack anyway. And then I'll hold up Colossus. If I have to cast Colossus, I don't get to cast a creature this turn, but that's okay. And if this ram just trades for Vindictive Vampire, that's okay as well. 
So they're going to go for the pump and the double block. I'm wondering if I get blown out by anything here. They could have the thing that gives death touch. Oh, single block. Yeah, this feels like the thing that gives death touch. That's fine. So they're, they're going to cantrip, lose their shade. They're going to net even on life. And then uh, I'll just drop my troll bread guardian. So what, what is it called? Death brand or something like that? One in a black death touch draw card? Blade brand might be the name of the card. No, go to damage. What? Oh, scorch mark. Huh. So if they have scorch mark... Oh yeah, I guess 21 because of the vampire. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if I lose my ram, I'll lose my ram. I'll play a 5-5 five five instead. No scorch mark. Really? What was that all about then? What was that block? Maybe maybe they had something they thought did something different? I don't know. If they ever tap out, we're going to get them super hard with Savage Smash plus Colossus. I'm not really sure what to expect here, though. I would have definitely put them on... Wow, Rafter Demon, huh? With one red up. The only card I can think of, only instant I can think of that costs one red is uh, the plus one plus O oh and... Um, what is it? Plus un, plus O, oh, and first strike, right. Oh, and scry one. So if they have that and I savage smash, they get a five power. So I think I go savage smash the guardian on the rafter demon. And then... Yeah, if this still gets to attack... Oh, uh, that's kind of bad, actually. I should put it on the ram. I, for some reason, I was thinking I had enough mana to um, adapt this. I don't, so I might just use Colossus here to get in a ton of damage. Could also get blown out by some... Ooh, Carnival. Oh, well. This does the trick still. That would actually make me lose my creature, but I'm going to give plus four, plus two, and trample. So this will have, um, it will die to the vampire if they want to block, but they take a million. Um, this is 15 trample damage. All right, opponent just concedes there. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. They weren't just dead, but they were going to take a huge amount there. All right, girl beats. Did fine. Let's see if we can repeat that in match two. And match two is up with our Gruel Beatdown deck. Uh, pretty good hand. If we draw a third land, we can cast everything. Rubble Belt makes Titanic Brawl a little bit better, and we have the Hide plus the Scorch Mark for some early interaction. So I'm going to keep this. We have all three colors as well. Do need to draw more lands and more action, but that is how a game of Magic works. Against Batista, 0820. Oh, uh, yeah, drawing more lands is good. Can you? Can you get on the battlefield, Goblin? Can you? Can you? All right, good. X1 seemed pretty bad against Orzhov. Oh, okay, we're playing against Demir, sure. So 2-1, Scry 2 when enters battlefield seems pretty good. I would rather have Omen Speaker basically every time, but I'm fine with that as well. Here I'm just going to play the Rubble Belt guy. Not going to attack. I think having my creatures on board against a blue deck is pretty important. Them having played this leads me to believe they're Azorius Splash in Black. Rather than anything else. Opponent going crazy with the cursor. Viscopa Vampire. 3-1 with lifelink. Okay. I can dig it. Ooh, that's really good if we can get a clean attack at some point. As it is, I don't really want to use a Skewer the Critics yet, so I'm just going to Scorch Mark here and then attack for three.
All right, a lot of blue mana. All right, don't mind them playing a locket. Again, this kind of tells me they're probably... No, I don't know. They, ooh, Enforcer. I'd much rather have a Scorch Mark for that. I am probably just going to have to accept a creature here as a loss. I do think what I can do, though... Eh, no, that's pretty bad as well. Let's think for a moment, because I'm going to lose this, right? I could skewer this and then attack. They can't double block because this can't be blocked by tokens. Um... And then have Titanic Brawl up, which isn't exactly great here. I don't love using Skewer on this, but I'd rather not trade my 3-3 three, three off here. So that's what we're going to do. Is go Skewer the Critics. And then jam with my 3-3. Three, three. Seems like an okay turn. I don't love spewing off the skewer there, but the Death Touch guy is really good. Alright, Azorius. Still looks like Azorius splashing black, but... Demir splashing white is weird. It could just be, like, straight-up Esper, right? I think a lot of the cards in this set incentivize you to be three-color decks quite often. Grasp and Thrill is really nice. I'm going to lose two, they're going to gain two, and they add a 3-3 flyer to the board. Like, what? I do get to attack with both my creatures here. Either one trades for that throw. Let's see what we draw first. Sorrowform Hybrid. Okay. So, I attack with both of these. They can't really block with the Savant on either one. They probably just take it. I activate this if they block with the 3-3. Three, three. I'm pretty happy with that trade. Could also play Beastmaster, attack with everything. I don't like that as much. And then Titanic Brawl here is not great. So I'm going to attack, hope they don't actually block the Gravel Hide Goblin. Although I think if they are going to block a creature with the 3-3, three, three, they probably block the Gravel Hide Goblin to make me use my mana for the turn. Geez, opponent is just kind of trolling over there. Basically, if anything uh, blocks the goblin, I'm going to go ahead and just pump the goblin. All right, I like this. It does make me use my mana, but it gets their biggest threat off board, which might mean they just have another big threat to play. But with one more mana, I can do two things, which is nice. Beastmaster doesn't have a very good attack at this point, but that's okay. actually kind of... Can you turn that off, the the highlighting? It's kind of nauseating. I know I do that a lot when I'm drafting, like I hover over cards and they kind of go all over the place. I don't love my opponent attacking with both creatures. Ooh, okay, they're going to make a 5-5. Five, five. And they get to scry too. Alright, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. This card seems quite strong. It's a 4-mana 3-3, three, three, and when it enters battlefield, you may sack a creature, put two counters on it, and scry one. Um, open the gates does guarantee a 6th land next turn, so what I could do here is... Uh, I've got a couple options. Probably going to take 6 next turn. That is getting to the point where we're dying. I could also Titanic Brawl here. At the very least, I'm going to open the gates for a gate, or a guild gate. Savage Smash was on top of the deck. We have blue mana already, right? Yeah. Let's go and get Gruel Guild Gate. Play that. And then I think it's more important to get this down, because it's threatening to be a 6-6 next turn. And it lets me hold up Titanic Brawl, which might matter. As it is, I don't really want to... Go out of my way here to get killed. I could double block the 5-5, five five, but I kind of want my hybrid to be a 6-6 six six if I can. 
Undergrowth does seem pretty bad against, uh, or <laughs> I said undergrowth, Adapt seems pretty bad against blue decks in general, because you invest all this mana, they just bounce it or kill it in response, or something like that. It's going to be the risk of playing Adapt in general. Alright, my opponent's keeping a bunch of mana up, so I don't, I don't think I can afford to hybrid here. I could play Beastmaster, though. See what they have. Could be running into a counter spell, maybe. There's a couple in the set. Uh, I'm going to give it haste. I do think I need to just race my opponent here. Or they might kill Beastmaster before combat or before attacks. As it is, I believe this is 9 damage. Um, I would rather them deal with the 2-2, I suppose, so I'll go ahead and pump there. Oh, looks like they're going to do the sack -a dude or whatever to um, destroy target creature. Oh no, Grotesque Demise. Okay. Um, so since I'm losing this... I think what I should do is Titanic Brawl off the Spirit. Maybe that's bad. I don't know. Yeah, let's get some sort of a advantage out of this Titanic Brawl while it matters. And then I, I do lose the thing here. Plus, I only get 5 damage in. Not in a great position here. I think I'm losing this game. Bones just playing kind of a control deck here. Good cards, though. Ironically, haven't seen very much blue at all. Despite them having more, more blue mana than anything else. Yep. Go and take five. We're down to three. Not where I want to be here. I, I really wish my opponent would stop doing that. It's, it's distracting. Uh-oh. Tapping your own mana? Consigned to the pit. Alright, so I go to one here. That's not good for me. I lose the Beastmaster. Don't think I can kill him on my turn. But pretty easy turn as far as just playing that. I'm going to play this Guildgate too. Since uh, if I draw Wrecking Beast, I want to have the Land already in play. I can't attack. I guess I could attack there. But uh, I'm going to attempt to have the double block up, even though it probably won't go well with my opponent having three cards in hand. They haven't played a land in a while either, so don't have high hopes for that. But I think my best bet is to just go for the double block here and hope that it's good enough. Can't really do anything about it otherwise. If I was just going to chump, I should have just blocked anyway. Fairy Duelist. So one of my creatures gets minus 2, minus 0. Alright, and that's also lethal. Uh, if my opponent had that in hand, I think... Oh, yeah, they... Missed lethal. Oh no, I might have had lethal on them if they hadn't done that. And that's going to go ahead and call it there. So we will go to game two against control deck, but I think we, we didn't draw any big creatures there. Consigned to the pit is six mana, right? Mm, Mammoth Spider seemed a lot better than Rubble Belt Recluse. This card's not bad though. So let's go and bring in the Mammoth Spider. Don't think I want. S well, actually. Fairy Duelist, Grasp and Throw, a couple Afterlife creatures. I probably want the Volley. And then Sphinx? Nah, I don't want Sphinx. What am I bringing out here? Steeple Creeper? We had a good start, but we didn't really capitalize on it. Like, we curved out at a 3 3, and then we didn't get any bigger creatures after that. Beastmaster was decent there. Lock it. Cut in 5-drop, but bringing a 5-drop in. Alright, just bring in the Mammoth Spider, basically. Alright, game 2 against Batista. Very similar hand, just without a 2-drop. The Ram is better than these Rubble Belt Runners, so we're going to play this out. Wouldn't mind drawing a 2-drop or another Guildgate on turn 2. Since getting this to a 4-4 four four is actually pretty good against Grotesque Demise. We'll see, though. We are on the play. Pretty convincing loss that last game. I guess it was close, right? They did play a 5-5, though, and if my beatdown deck can't beat a 5-5, that might be a pretty bad sign for us. 
there were some opportunities for me to like three for one myself with the Titanic Brawl. I don't think that's right. Ooh, all right, so they get to scry three on their first turn. And they get to scry every turn of the game when this is out. Plus it's a 4-4 four, four flyer, which is a beast, already bigger than every card in my hand. You can keep some pretty risky hands if you have this. If you're like looking for land, having this in your open in hand lets you keep it, and you're probably going to find the lands you want. Seems like a pretty strong, easy first pick for me. Fits in Azorius or Simic just fine. Three on top, all right. I would love to see my opponents open in hand. All right, cool. Um, Actually, yeah, I was about to play a land. Let's go ahead and open the gates for Gruul Guild Gates. So we get to play a 4-4 Ram, which is very nice. And ship the turn. Death Touch guy would be pretty annoying. If they played that, I'd probably run out the Rubble Belt Runner. Could be running into a Counterspell here. There is a... The counter spell that counters unless I pay two mana. And it looks like they do have that, in fact. Hey, look, if my opponent's hand is perfect, then I can't beat them, right? It, it does suck. They got my best card there, but not a lot I can do about it. Quench. Small mana leak. Footlight Fiend, huh? Was not expecting that. That's not very good against me. It's a little weird that's in my opponent's deck at all. All right, let's go Rubble Belt, Runner, and Pass. Play out the Sphinx here. What is it, Sphinx of Foresight? Yeah, Sphinx is very good. Ooh, Savage Smash is very good as well. Problem with Savage Smash is that uh, I deal 5 to this, and then they block with this and it trades off. I could just Savage Smash to kill this and not pass, uh, and then just pass, not attack. Alternatively, I can attack if they block with the Sphinx. Then I can use Colossus. If they double block, then it gets a little awkward. Then I just trade two for two here. I'm going to attack. Oh, I have Collision. <laughs> I really want to get Colossus in there, I guess. Um, yeah, that's pretty dumb. Let's just let this happen and then Collision, I think. Yeah, let's just deal with this flyer right now. No point waiting until their turn because they could have counter spell or some sort of weird pump or bounce spell, and then on top of that, they get the scry. Yeah, let's not forget the destroy target flyer mode on Collision Colossus. Probably getting pecked for one here. Pick. Hopefully, my opponent just taps out for something that dies to this plus Savage Smash. Okay, or yeah. It's pretty good. Fairy Duelist, huh? Alright, we're just gonna attack. Nothing fancy here. I'm running into some sort of flash creature. Spire Mangler. It is Spire Mangler. So what I can do is let that resolve. In response to the trigger, I can Titanic Brawl. So it's going to give itself plus 2 plus 0. Fine by me. And we still get the 3 damage in. Still don't think I'm skewering or anything like that. Why is Footlight Fiend in my opponent's deck? It, it seems so out of place compared to the rest of the cards they played. Alright, so they grow Testimize. That's fine. Um, I've got another Rubble Belt to play at the very least. I've got some removal spells for most moderate-sized creatures. I'm just going to play Rubble Belt over the hybrid here. And to pass the turn. They got another grow Testimize at the ready? 
That would be gross. No. They do have a lot of lands, though, and only two cards left in hand. Alright, so... Attacking here is a little awkward. If they have the little fairy thing, how bad is that for me? They shrink this down to a 1-3. That's a 1-2 and a 1-1. One, one. They don't actually kill my creature, right? I'm going to attack. Nope, they just take it. So we get to play hybrid plus a guild gate. And we are close to just skewering them out of the game here. This is six burn damage in my hand. I have five power on board. And it looks like my opponent doesn't have much of anything going on. They're probably super flooded. Steeple Creeper's fine here as well. Still don't think I'm doing any uh, fight spell into open mana here. Okay. Um, actually, what are the chances they have, like, minus two, minus two, everything? That would be a huge blowout. They didn't play anything last turn. Yeah, if they have the minus two, minus two to everything, that actually kills my board. Oh, no, because it would exile Footlight Fiend. Yeah, this wouldn't have died to it, but it would have killed Steeple Creeper and the hybrid. Blade Juggler, okay. Solid card. Paying five for it. So, lose a life, draw a card. This card's really good, I think. Like, very strong for a common. Alright, so what am I doing here? I could go for the Savage Smash. Becky, let me Savage Smash. Could just offer the trade here, straight up. Or I could just play Steeple Creeper. If I attack with both, both my creatures die. I might only have to get one more damage on him, though. Yeah, well, I don't know really what goes wrong here. If I attack with both, they both trade off, and then I play two more creatures. I think that's fine. I get to go ahead and finish off the hybrid. Plus, Steeple Creeper can start jumping in the air next turn. Four mana to give it flying. Well, they've got something on end step here. Another Spire Mangler. Alright, good to know. My opponent's got a lot of instant speed stuff. That does block Steeple Creeper. Creeple Steeper. Wrecking Beast. Not quite what I wanted there. Um, so a couple options here. I could just attack with both creatures, and if one of my creatures gets through, I guess that's really bad against the stupid fairy duelist. Not really bad, actually. It's just fine. Sure, I'm going to attack with both. All right, going to blocks means probably no fairy. And then I'm going to go for the double skewer here. Not too much they can have to stop me from just burning them here. If they had a counter spell, I, I really don't think they have a counter spell, but it's possible. All right, cool. So burn damage got there. We get to force a game three against Batista. Let's do it, Batista. They are almost exclusively flyers now that I think about it, so... Uh, Gift of Strength is fine. I want the second Mammoth Spider. I don't... I still don't want the Sphinx. Maybe Sphinx is better than... Wrecking Beast. You know what? I like. Just because a lot of their threats are flying. And then Gift of Strength... Does give Reach... Gift of Strength can also be used to counter Grotesque Demise. Titanic Brawl has looked pretty poor. I think my matchup against them should be fine. Alright, I'm going to bring in one Gift of... Ooh, hold on a second. Why do we have... Oh, right, Mammoth Spider. 
Still like the troll bread. Remote rhythm, rhythm. Sorry, I want to make sure I'm not doing something completely dumb here. All right, maybe Gift of Strength is pushing it. It is really good against what you call it, though. Okay, by Gift of Strength, let's let's run with this. Game three against Batista. Um, this is our first really sketchy hand with only two lands. I'm gonna keep it though. I have a two drop. This ought to be pretty good against them. In fact, a lot of their flyers died to just the one damage. All right. Well, that solves a lot of our problems here. Namely, the blue for Chillbringer and our third land all at once is nice. This is instant, yes? Yeah. All right, probably going to have to trade off for that early on, and that's fine. Um, mm, nah, let's go and play the two drop here. This is almost certainly going to be Collision this game instead of Colossus. This seems like they're going to... Well, what could they play on turn 3? No, I'm just going to block it. Go and give them their spirit now. If they're attacking into me, that means they're going to have something to block my 2-2. Two -two. I'd rather just save the point of damage. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Yeah, they would happily trade off. All right, might have to take a turn off here. Oh, never mind. That was actually a really good draw as well. Let's go and play out our 3-3 here. Ideally, they play a flyer that dies to Sagitt Sagittar's Volley. I didn't quite see what they did with their Scry there, though. Alright, Blade Juggler it is. Pretty good. If I attack with Blade Juggler, or if I attack, they block with Blade Juggler. Oh, Skewer actually changes things a little bit here. I wonder if I'm supposed to play Steeple Creeper. Or if I'm supposed to just Skewer this 3-2. Could attack, and if they block... Use Colossus, keep my creature around, get in some extra damage, and then Skewer for one to kill this. Then I'm giving up on Collision, but I think that's fine. I still have Sagittar's Volley, so yeah, let's see if we can go and get this stupid 3-2 out of the way. Yeah, no blocks, also a possibility. But that lets me not do much of anything. It still gives me the same choice of either Steeple Creeper or Skewer. Definitely going to play the Guild Gate, and then... Problem is, they just attack into Steeple Creeper. Alright, let's Creeple some Steeples. Probably going to take six on my next turn, though. A, do they have the stupid Grasp and Throw? I would love for them to just play another Flyer, though. Okay, Shimmer Possibility is not too threatening. They get to look at four cards and put one in their hand. Guess I should be a little bit smarter about my attacks here. Maybe shouldn't have attacked with this since it lets them block with their Sage Row Savants. Yep, and this attack makes perfect sense. Jeez, opponent, stop. You're, you're, you're killing me with this. Huh, okay. Interesting. All right, let's go and just play Chillbringer. Bring the chill. And we'll go ahead and lock down, I guess, just the Blade Juggler. If I lock down the 2-1 and attack with Steeple Creeper, they trade the 3-2 off, but I get to keep my 3-3. Three, three. I think that's fine. I, I don't mind trading off the creature here. 
Steeple Creeper is fine against them, but it's not insane. I am kind of hedging against them having a removal spell for Chillbringer, though. Especially since I know they have Grotesque Demise at very minimum in their deck. Yep. Not a great trade for me since they got value off that Blade Juggler, but it's fine. It means I'm taking a lot less damage. Get to block these Sage Rose Savants as well. Yes, there we go. That's what we wanted to see. Because now I get to kill the Spirit and the 4-4, and I get to start jamming. Could even skewer as well if I wanted to, but I don't think that's where I want to be. Alright, we're going to go ahead and... Boom, and shaboom to your Spirit as well. Maybe I just attack with 1-3-3, three, three, trade 6 damage for 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and attack with both. And I'm going to keep Skewer, because Skewer is potentially burn damage to the face, like I said. Could actually even kill them next turn. These on Chillbringer is lethal. If they just tap out for like a ground creature or something. Let's see what they play first. I'm consigned to the pit. Alright, all right, you got me. Destroys it. I lose two life. Means I'm possibly going down to 10 this turn. But even, yeah, this is lethal. If they attack with both, they're dead. Alright. Not that I blame my opponent for doing that, but we will go ahead and plus 4, plus 2. And then Skewer. No Convoke spells or free spells in this format. Cool. So, odd deck from the opponent there, but thankfully we have a <laughs> super strong uh, sideboard against Flyers. So, we managed to take that game after losing game one, which was nice. That is going to put us at 2-0. One more and we'll break even. See us in round three coming up. All right, this is in fact round three. Uh, we're getting a little bit lucky for a deck with only 16 lands to draw a fortunate number of lands. I like this hand too. Two drop, three drop, four drop is nice. We are on the draw against James, either James Scritz or James Critz. I'm going to assume it's Critz, like rolled a natural 20. Gruel, I feel like... Oh, never mind. Most likely Gruel, though. Alright, um, I would actually rather trade this off, and I'm probably hella blocking this stupid goblin if they attack. Maybe not. Maybe I'm not hella blocking the goblin if they attack. I don't want to take too much early damage against this Simic Gruel deck or whatever, though. Um... What's my next turn look like? Lock it? Nah. Trade two for two right now. I might regret not taking my opportunity to get this off since it can pump later on. Okay, we're going to want to skewer that, so I think what's going to happen here... Ooh, nice. Not going to play that this turn. I'm going to attack for two. They're not going to block. And then I'm going to play Hybrid plus Skewer on Incubation Druid. This card is really strong. You don't even have to adapt it to get the counters on it. Um, so let's go Shaboom and Shabam. Yeah, so it becomes a 3-5 with Adapt 3, and if it has any counters on all at all, it produces 3 mana. Plus, but on its own, it taps for a mana. So talking about a 2-mana mana dork. All right, Aramunculus is good. Nope, this creature just has so much more value. Savage Smash was a good draw as well. Um, is it time to smash? Becky, is it time to smash? Oh, my opponent missed a land drop. Yeah, I think it's time to smash. Actually, uh, if I play Gatekeeper Ram this turn, it's a 3-3. Three, three. This needs a 4-4, four, four, right? Yeah. Could also play Beastmaster as a 3-3, three, three, which means I'm not attacking this turn. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we got a plan. We're going to go ahead and just play Beastmaster here with a 1-1 one, one counter and pass the turn. And then next turn, 
Assuming my opponent's going to have to tap out for a creature or something. Hopefully not a removal spell, but we get to Savage Smash, give this plus 2, plus 2, kill a creature, and then attack and give another creature plus 5, plus 0. We'll see if it all pans out that way, but that's kind of what we're hoping for. Is my opponent just kind of use their mana to play another creature this turn. If they just tap, pass without using any mana, that's a little bit different. Aeromunculus getting in there. All right, they pass, so we're, we're not going to just run into a trick, right? Um, I do think I attack with at least the Territorial Boar. Yeah, I'm not about getting got on the trick here, so I'm going to attack with just the Boar. If they want to use a trick here, that's fine. They didn't attack into me with the Goblin, though. Okay. I'm expecting a trick here. No, just trade. That's fine. Go and play Gatekeeper Ram. Gatebreaker Ram. Still have the same option available. Opponent with the Guild Gate. With the GG. And a no attack on the Aeromunculus. Still don't like attacking with both of these. I guess I can go attack, attack, right? Still get kind of blown out by a pump spell, but Savage Smash has got to be wrong. I'm going to play the Guild Gate this turn. All right, well, let's make them use a pump spell here. If they just have like a bounce spell or something, that's not the worst. Could attack with this as well. Give it the pump. This is four to adapt. Okay. Yeah, I like this. I imagine one of my creatures is going to get eaten by some sort of pump spell here. Slime bind. Minus four, minus oh. Oh, that kills my creature, doesn't it? Oh no, it, it just shrinks its power. Okay, that that's fine. They got a good little two for one off of me there. Um, And that's okay. We still got in the three damage. So <laughs> if this said it gives plus X plus X until end of turn, I would have actually just killed my own creature there. Because uh, X would have been 3. I would have given my creature <laughs> minus 3, minus 3. Or minus 1, minus 1. No, nah, it wouldn't have actually died. Whatever. Open the gates for a gateway plaza. They probably have some number of like rams of their own. Is this a May ability? Oh my god, I have to shrink one of my creatures when this attacks? Well, I guess we don't attack with it. That means they're not playing it on blocking. Ooh, that's very good. Well, let's just go ahead and jam with a troll. Bre troll bread guardian. My opponent has not tapped out a single turn that I've been willing to cast this savage smash. And they've hit a lot of their mana now. <clears throat> so hopefully not like a bunch of chill bringers or anything like that. Wrecking Beast is coming down if we draw another land. And Wrecking Beast is a hard hitter. Opponent playing very cautiously this game. Ooh, Chillbringer is great. Can't cast it though, so maybe not so great. Ugh, opponent keeping up all this mana sucks. I'm going to attack with just this thing, because they can adapt here. And I'm guessing they have like a bounce spell, maybe? Incongruity. So exile it and make a 3-3. Okay, that's not the worst thing that could have happened there. I kind of want to crack this locket and try to hit a land. And then I'm still in the position of another land giving me the beast, but I'm closer to getting blue mana. I could also just brick on 
<laughs> getting a land off of it, but I think I'm going for it. Plus, guild gates are nice here. Skewer, skewer. Huh. Jeez, my opponent just keeping their mana up and casting instants is really just ruining everything I want to do. <laughs> I say that, they've cast one instant in this game. Noxious Grudion. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, Savage... Oh no, it, it is a fight. All right, that's decent. So I think my play here is let's go ahead and skewer this thing. Um, if that happens, attack with both, get in the damage, and then for one mana, skewer the Aramunculus. Gotta be careful about that as well. So this will put my opponent on no creatures. All right, and they cannot save the Aramunculus. All right, to you. No no more tricks with your your homunculus mutant. I have lethal on board, and I've got some pretty good tricks of my own here. A flyer just doesn't do it. Eh, 3-1 lifelink might be good. Blue mana for cliff. I don't think we have any untapped blue sources, though. So what's the play here? I could just go for the win. I think I'm going to attack with both and just use Colossus, though. Does this kill them through lifelink? Apparently it does. Uh, <laughs> Exaxes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we dealt 10. They gained 3. And against the Whatchamacallit. Mammoth Spider looking good in this format, not gonna lie. Rebel Belt Recluse, though. They have Noxious Grudion in their deck for some reason. Wait, hold on. I, I didn't even think about that. They had the random black death touch dude. <laughs> maybe, maybe my opponent's playing some weird, like, three, four color deck, actually. I, I've only seen one flyer. I don't want this volley quite yet. Anytime I see a death touch creature, I'm going to board out the creature that has to attack into it. And, uh... Sphinx? Sphinx does get exiled by the uh, incongruity, since it is a blue-green spell. I think I like this hand on the draw. We're going to need a third land, but I think that's a reasonable thing to ask for. The Wrecking Beast is very awkward here. Yeah, Rakdos Guildgate. So my opponent is just Gates or something. Simic Guildgate. It's all three colors again. Granted, blue is only in this deck for one thing. In fact, the Gates are here more for the Ram than they are for anything else. All right. Let's go and play Sauroform Hybrid. If they attack, eh, might block. Almost like we're playing against a completely different deck now. Uh, nah. Again, this is so good later on in the game. Titanic Brawl. Alright, I'm going to attack and then play Steeple Creeper. Creeple Steeper. That sets up a lot of damage next turn if I get to play Skewer on a blocker. Honestly, my opponent could have anything, though. Gruel Guildgate. I mean, my opponent's starting off this format with the deck I want to play. <laughs> the Gate deck. Huh, okay. Open the Gates. So I do think I'm going to skewer this vampire and attack with both. If that's the case, then I should... Well, ooh. I have to play a basic this turn to do that, right? If I want to play a gate. I don't necessarily have to play a gate this turn, so that's fine. Um, do want to skewer the 3-1. I don't really want my opponent gaining life here. I also don't have to attack... I'm just choosing which of my creatures I want to die here. I think Steeple Creeper is worse than this thing. They're going to block it for sure. I'm, I'm not going to attack. Let's go get a Gruel Guild Gate.
pass turn. Janky collection of creatures here. Gravel hide goblin into the uh, Orzhov split card. Sure thing. Okay, never mind. We got a game on our hands. In fact, we got enough of a game that we might just die. <laughs> this thing have trample? No, but it can't be blocked by creatures power two or less. All right. Well, whelp. Here is what we're going to do. I think I'd jump this and attack for 4, take 8, 9, 10, possibly 12 on the swing back. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a little bit of trouble here. Can't block that. Let's get in 4 damage. That might matter here. Yeah, this card is brutal. I think I'm going to lose to it, just straight up. Feels like it. If I kill it, they can play a gate to put it back on top of their deck. But I'm probably going to have to end up chumping it and hope I can cast Reckon Beast on time and like sneak out a win or something. They didn't attack with the Goblin. All right, here comes another gate. All right, so our farm hybrid is fine. All right, let's really think about what we're doing here. So this is a fine chump blocker. Um, so I can play Rubble Belt. I can use Titanic Brawl to kill one of these blockers and attack with both of these. That still lets me Guildgate for the turn, which I'm going to play no matter what. They trade off for the 4-2. They take 2 damage. Um, I don't necessarily have to block this. And then maybe I can get him with like Wrecking Beast plus... Uh, skewer? Is that right? <sighs> this is tough. Alright. I think the play is Rubble Belt. Brawl. Have this fight. They can act... How much green mana do they have? Two. Yeah, let's just fight the potential 6-6 six, six, <laughs> rather than the potential 4-3. Uh, I'll go ahead and jam with both of my creatures here. It's worth noting, I don't know if my opponent played a land last turn or not. They did fetch up Gateway Plaza, but they didn't play it. So either they forgot to play it or they wanted to hold up two mana for something. Um, if they attack here, which they're going to, I don't think I'm going to block. Alright, Rhythm of the Wild's not too big of a deal. I guess they could play a haste creature here. Sure. Three, four, five. This is 11. That's still not enough damage on them. Not sure what my opponent could have here. You've got floating mana. You can you can use that. Weird. All right, my opponent did something strange there. They've got a floating mana they didn't use. Eight eight coming in, I presume. I'm gonna take this hit. Now I gotta watch out for Rhythm of the Wild too. All right, Gate Breaker Ram. It's a big creature. It's a 5-5? Five five? Alright, well, I can attack for 2. I think I'm supposed to leave a second creature back because Rhythm makes it very likely they just have another haste creature. And then I wonder if I'm supposed to just skewer them. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to skewer them and then try to set myself up to win with a... 
Wrecking Beast if I draw a basic off the top. Could also double block this thing, but that seems bad. Skitter Eel with Haste, maybe? <laughs> it's actually kind of awkward if you put a 1-1 counter on it. Alright, they did give it Haste. Why would you give it haste? Alright, well, we're gonna block here. They might have given it haste so they can still adapt it, because if it came in with a counter, they can't adapt, but I can't imagine that matters too much. Mammoth Spider is another blocker. So I'm gonna attack with my 5-5. Five five. Uh, again, I, I die, though, if they have a creature. Oh, this has Vigilance, though, so sure. Easy attack. If they have something, they have something. Sure, they did have something there, so I think we just lose now, because I have to chump. No, well... I mean, let that happen. This thing dies. I'll play Mim. No, actually, I can't. Yeah, we're just in chump mode, so I'm going to go ahead and concede. But I think I can take this deck from my opponent. They don't have a lot of like realistic things going on um i don't have a d face i thought i did interesting whether or not i want rubble read and probably not though uh eight eight is huge though i mean i'll give him that there was maybe a turn i don't think we would have gotten him with Reckon beast though i don't think i want anything actually six five that has to attack into an eight eight is pretty bad yeah, I think I just got to outpower them with like a more consistent deck here and hope they don't have too much going on. The 8-8 was really the only problem we saw. We could deal with everything else, so let's run it back. All right, so this is round three against a gate deck. Ooh, this is actually a risky hand because we do have a lot of expensive cards. I think I am going to keep on the back of a two-drop and skewer, but I will admit it's not great. This Wrecking Beast keeps finding it in its in our opening hand. There's something about seven mana cards. I remember that time I played with Hatchery Spider, and it was just always in my opening hand. That's a better two drop. I'll play it out. Just because if they play like a 1-1, one, one, I can attack into it. Highly doubt my opponent's gate deck is playing a 1-1. One, one. All right, lands, please. Okay, that's a good start. Thank you. Thank you, deck. Um... Just gonna offer a trade here. I'd rather save Skewer for like an Aramunculus or something. Again, I don't I don't necessarily have to even attack there, but I think I do. The less blockers my opponent has, the better something like Beastmaster is if I get to play it. Gatekeeper Ram. Alright, we're gonna have to skewer that as soon as uh we can. That way, if they play another gate, it doesn't turn into a 4-4. Four, four. It's the only opportunity we're going to have to take care of a creature like that. Jeez, this seems like an actual huge payoff for being in the gate deck, though. God, my opponent's janky deck has been able to cast all their spells. Alright, so another land means I can actually attack into Aramunculus. They can't really block. And then I'm going to play... Beastmaster, I think, with a counter on it. They use my mana best anyway, so it's probably the right thing to do. They might have to leave up mana to uh, adapt. Opponent with no red mana, which probably doesn't matter too much. Never mind, opponent with red mana. And their gate... Colossus thing currently cost 5 mana, so they could uh, get in there. Fully expect my opponent to not attack. Ooh, Titanic Brawl is actually great. So I'm going to attack with both now. And if they adapt before blocks, I get to Titanic Brawl. It costs 1 mana as well. If this works out, they could also just have a card in their hand. I'm, I'm expecting their adapt in, but. No, it looks like they might be casting something from their hand instead. 
Apply to Biomancy. All right, well, we're going to try and kill this Aramunculus before it gets a counter. Good. So it does bounce my Goblin, but I do get that damage in, and I can play the Rubble Belt. And now it's fingers crossed they don't have the stupid Colossus. Because I haven't dealt enough damage for them, to them to push in this win. You got it? This card's also great. Applied Biomancy. Choose one or both. Put a 1-1 counter on a creature until... Oh, I'm sorry. A target creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. And or return a creature to its owner's hand. Um, wow, Rhythm of the Wild with Trollbred Guardian seems sick. I'm going to attack with both if they give me the opportunity. I'm smelling some sort of flash creature, but this is 9 damage. Oh no, whoops, I ended my turn. I thought my opponent had something there. That That's bad. That could be real bad. Oh no! I gained some 8 life. <laughs> and I missed playing a creature. Wow, couldn't get much worse, huh? Do I throw away Beastmaster here? I get in 6 damage, I kill their angel... I get to skewer for one and play Rhythm of the Wild. Uh, I messed up pretty bad last turn not playing a creature here. Could also put them at three with skewer. All right, I'm going to two for one myself here. Don't like it. They could also block the six three, but I doubt they'll do that. Opponent's got a lot of good gate payoffs. The Angel, the Colossus. Ooh, they blocked the six three. That's really good for me, actually. Um, I am going to play Rhythm, though. Sweet deck from the opponent here. Dead Rebels. All right, so they're going to get back the Ram and the Angel. That's not good for me. Land. Basic land sucks. All right, so what are we doing here? Well, we're definitely playing that, and then that's going to be a huge Ram. I can just attack for three and play the... Uh, Gravel Hide Goblin with a counter on it. Yeah, this seems fine. I'd be surprised if they chumped, but they could. Alright. I mean, I get it. If they lead off with the Angel, I get to actually play this Trollbred thing. Um... But if they lead off with the ram, I could be in trouble. Alright, them playing the angel, I think, is what I want to happen. Opponent's back up to 17, though. Like, what in the world? Uh, so, Guardian coming in. Let's see, if I play Guardian, I attack with everything. That's 5... 11, they eat this, they keep the angel though, which is problematic. So I could actually play the ram here. Still probably to, right to just play this and bash for 5, I think. Uh, yeah, let's give it haste. Wow, opponent's back at 17. That's actually crazy. Alright, so here comes the Ram and probably another play. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow.
Oh, they have a fight spell? No way. No way! Oh my god, my opponent's gonna win this game, aren't they? <laughs> wow. Attacking with the flyer, though. Okay, maybe not. Steeple Creeper. Not a very good draw, to be honest. What it does do is give me a potential flyer. So I think I'm going to just play it here with a counter. And then I think I just have to ship the turn. <sighs> yep. My opponent is convincing me on the gate deck here, I'm not going to lie. Oh, they have another fight spell in hand? Is that what's going on? Attack with both. I mean, I don't think this gets too much better for me by sitting back and taking 10 a turn, so I'm going to go for the double block. They have a trick, they have a trick. Still take a million that way. All right, what's our follow-up play? Not the Colossus, not the Colossus. Scorch Mark. All right, well, we get to go ahead and play Gatekeeper Ram. And we get a nice attack here if they don't have anything super crazy. Uh, give it haste. Attack with both. This is uh, 10 damage. Oh, we can actually just skewer them, can't we? Huh. Nope, they've got something. Um, okay, well, they're going to eat one of my creatures. Um, I'm going to get to Scorch Mark them, though. So they they won't have very much left. I did forget they had that in their, in their deck. They do block the Beastmaster. And, uh, yeah, this is fine. It, it's not great, but it does leave me with a 4-4 to nothing, and I have the Skewer. Assuming their last card isn't another stupid Stony Strength or something. So I, I do need them to brick on having a creature that can just straight up block this, though. All right. This should do it. This has been a fun game. <laughs> I messed up once by not playing a spell during a turn, which might have made a huge difference. Almost gave my opponent an opportunity to come back and kill me. Also, dope deck from the opponent. That was awesome. But we do get to advance to 3-0, and and... Uh, that makes back our prize, or at least our entry fee. And we get to open. <gasps> we guild mage. Awesome, I guess. Two more to go. Uh, well, potentially three if I lose one of them and win two, but we've got two more potential wins here. I'll see you in round four. Round four up. We are on the play with a pretty risky hand. Um, it's actually not even that great of a hand since Titanic, Titanic Brawl is dead. I'm going to keep and just... You know, hope to hit a, a red source. It's not advisable to do that, but against a uh, cask nine tube, that's what I'm gonna do. And of course, we'll be against Rakdos, which is <laughs> probably the worst thing we could be against. Oh, Orzhov. Okay, a little bit more grindy of a game. Gutter bones. They drew that for the turn. One mana, two one, but coming down on turn two. Unfortunately, we haven't even hit a fourth land, which doesn't get us closer to this Chillbringer, but thankfully Scorchmark does get rid of Gutter Bones and is really good against Orzhov. We're just going to take a beat in up to that point. Uh, that's probably more deserving of a Scorchmark. Yeah, we are in trouble this game. Not drawing the fourth land when we had three already was pretty bad, but we are playing a 16 land deck. Uh, what has to happen for you to bring Gutter Bones back? Yeah, I just can't block these. I I'm going to die very fast here. Senate Griffin. All right, not quite the card I was expecting, but my opponent did <laughs> have a really sweet curve out here. All right, um... Yeah, I could see a universe where I draw a red source next turn and maybe get in there. 
Might actually have to block friggin' gutter bones. Take six. That's so bad, though. All right, let's take all the damage. Hope they don't have too big of a follow-up play. I guess that's not too bad. They have two creatures to play, though? Wow, my opponent has... Oh, drill bit? Oh, I want to scoop in response to that. No, I don't want them to... Ugh. I didn't want them to reveal, uh, have my hand revealed there. Since I feel like I'm losing that game, I would rather not show them anything. They didn't even know my second color. I guess I played the Gruel Guildgate, though. Uh, same deal. They have the de maybe this maybe creatures that have to attack just aren't good here. And then again, I like the Sphinx over the Wrecking Beast. Um, they play Senate Griffin and a couple Afterlife creatures. What did we take out last time? Titanic Brawl, I think. Okay. See you in game two. All right, on the play again, this is game two. Uh, collision's nice here. Uh, this hand's good. It's certainly better than the last hand we kept. Maybe not on pure power level, but at least we can cast our spells. Three mana, three, three into some removal spells is fine. Opponent is playing Drill Bit, so that's kind of annoying. I, I, don't, I don't like discard in general. It just... I don't know, there's like, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I know it's necessary, and I think every set should have some amount of discard, but when they get to see your hand, it's just like, ugh, leave me alone. Why, why do you know all my dirty secrets? Opponent showed us a lot of good cards, though. Nothing we couldn't beat. Yeah, 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 whatever. If you're turn one gutter bones, scorch mark off the top? Nope, never so lucky. We had a lot of good answers last game, too. Uh, Scorchmark, deal with Gutter Bones permanently. Let's see if they go Sick Carve out here. One drop, two drop. Pestilence, Spirit, Senate Griffin. Okay. I hope they have another land. I hope that's not all they kept. They can take whatever they want here. Probably Savage Smash or one of my three drops. Collision Colossus seems like the least likely, unless they have a really good flyer. But I have two good removal spells. For flyers. Again, just feels kind of dirty. Like, the fact that they get to see the rest of the cards whenever somebody plays a spell like this. So I hate Thought Seize and Inquisition and stuff like that. I'm like, why, why do you get to see the rest of my cards? Just, uh, you, you know everything. You, this is a game of hidden information. They do have to make a decision, though. Like, also, this <laughs> is just like, ah, spectacle. They take the Ram. Yeah, Ram is better than Runner, so at the very least they figured that out. Okay, well, that would have made Ram really good. They did keep a one-lander, wow. Oh, and they got rewarded by playing another land off the top? Such nonsense. Kind of want to... I mean, I'm... I don't think I give them an opportunity to spectacle a card here. They didn't cast anything. No, nah, I'm going to get in there, though. Missing the three damage seems poor. Let's go and play Simic Guildgate. We draw a chill, chill, chilly flyer or whatever, then it'll be good that we played the Simic Guildgate. All right, Gutterbone's going to get in there. Let's see if they drew the third land. Nope. Uh, looks like they might have had a dead rebel or something, though. They looked at their graveyard. Ugh, that's, <laughs> that's not great. All right, same attack, though. They still know about all three of these cards. And we're at parity, despite our opponent being stuck on one color and two lands. Alright, Enforcer's really annoying. We are one mana away from playing this Sphinx, though. Ooh, Beastmaster. So if my opponent's going to force me to trade off here, I might as well make it worth their while. In fact, I could get in a ton of damage here, right? No, I'll just give it haste.
now almost every draw in my deck is live. They're going to take five for the opportunity to get spirit and kill that. Okay. Still good. This enforcer is great. This is what, three games we've seen it in now? Something along those lines. The, the token doesn't bother me too much, though, because they can't actually block this with it. Also, can this this thing... Oh, Gutter Bones can block. Interesting. Most cards like that can't block. My opponent's aware of both of these spells, so they got to be careful about what they attack or don't attack with. In fact, if I go Colossus up to 7 and Savage Smash up to 9, I have Lethal if they... uh attack with one creature and they don't have an answer. We go for it. What could they have in double black? I, I don't know the cards well enough. Windstorm Drake? Could also just play a 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't like the idea of just getting blown out here, so I'm going to attack, and it looks like they're going to block. And I'm going to play this Sphinx, which has Hexproof from Monocolored, which is awkward because a lot of the removal in this set is dual-colored, but... Okay, so my opponent's greed caught up with them, kind of similar to what happened to me in Game 1. Granted, I kept a 3-lander. They just straight up never even hit the third land in 7 turns, so... I wonder if I want, like, Bush Strider against this opponent. Probably better than Steeple Creeper, right? No, okay, get out of here. Maybe not. Steeple Creeper's kind of whatever, though. Axe Bane Beast against Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones. Alright, let's go to game 3. All right, so this is round three. Again, we've got a little bit of a risky hand, but on the draw, this is certainly better than the same kind of hand we had on the play. Um, pretty slow to just like, again, the turn one gutter bones, but not much I can do. We also have the volley, which seemed good against them. Uh, no turn one gutter bones. Okay, cool. The third land's nice. So I assume they're going to play some sort of aggro two drop. At the very least, we'll have, like, Skewer and whatnot. Oh, no 2-drop either. We have no 2-drop either. They just hard cast Drill Bit. That doesn't feel as bad. Although, if they take Gatekeeper Ram, my deck... Or, my hand doesn't actually do anything. Could have a Grotesque Demise. Um, I would actually rather them kill this thing if they have Grotesque Demise, so I'm going to play out Rubble Belt Runner. Looks like they just don't have a play. Might see a Senate Griffin. Haven't actually seen a lot of our opponent's deck. Ooh, Spire, Spirit of the Spire, so 2-4 Flyer, your other creatures with flying get plus O plus 1. Um, it's super tempting to just play Beastmaster. Uh, Sagittarius Volley also kills this. Savage Smash kills it and lets me hit for 5. I have a lot of good plays here. I think my play is going to be Beastmaster with a counter, though. I, I probably should have attacked first. In fact, I definitely should have attacked first. Because I can't block them, and they might not block for fear of a pump spell. They've already seen pump spells out of my deck. This sets up a really strong attack next turn, especially if they just play, like, another flyer or something. Um, yeah, this is instant. Not too much that can go wrong here. Other than just, you know, straight-up removal spells or whatever. Okay, that's fine. Um, play the ram. Not scared of a sweeper. Could have Kaya's Wrath, that would be really nasty. Impassioned Orator. Not going to be too great here. Alright, I think we just... Skewer? Don't really give them an opportunity to double block. We could go for Savage Smash here, but they have 4 mana up. Let's just go for... Skewer on this orator. Orator. Alright, looks like they have no plays. I'm just gonna jam with everything. 
I'm going to put um, the plus three here. So this is the creature they're most likely to want to deal with. This doesn't have a trample yet, so I'd rather them, if they feel forced to deal with something, to deal with the creature I like the least. Opponent's at five. We, we just double skewer them. Like, they're just dead. Play the orator. Yeah, we don't even have to attack. One mana white spell, though. We're not going to push our luck too much. Yeah, plus, they have to just double chump here. So, I, I don't know. This, my opponent's uh, aggro deck just kind of really fizzled out there. <laughs> and we shall skewer you. And I have a second backup skewer in case this breaks. What's my opponent's hand? Just nothing? That was, that was weird. This is by far the weirdest match we've had, but hey, I'll take the victory. <laughs> Puts us one step closer to the 5-0. and In fact, with that being said, we have... Wait. <gasps> we have one more match to go, or potentially pick up a loss. We'll have another match after that, but let's see if we can just clean sweep it. See you in round five. And round five it is. Oh, yeah. Um... <sighs> Can't cast anything, and we have the stupid Wrecking Beast again. I actually think I'm going to Mulgan this. If anything else was a land here, I'd probably keep. Uh, this is pretty bad, too, but if we hit green mana on top, it's fine. Sure. Opponent also Mulgan. I eat soot. You should get that check. That's not good for your gastrointestinal track. That kills the man. Ooh, against Gruul. Probably a good sign that there are two Gruul decks facing down for us, right? I'm going to play this boar. Actually, kind of don't care about the boar. If we draw Steeple Creeper, it can attack as a 3-3, so whatever, I guess. Also, I don't mind attacking this into basically any of the two drops my opponent could play. Um, We're just going to use our mana as best as possible with the ram here. Also makes gates decent top decks, but we will lose to a flurry of big creatures here if that's what my opponent ends up having. Not sure how I feel about that little bloodthirst animation. It's kind of weird. Uh-oh. In the rhythm of the wild, I go walking in the sneak. I'm probably dead. You! This stupid card. Is the algorithm like you have to draw seven drops? Is that what goes on here? Now, good news is we get to put our opponent at 14. Bad news is we're missing land drops, and my opponent's going to play some beefy chunkers next turn. Whatever beefy chunker means... I don't know. Also, we just have a bunch of tutus. Hopefully they play something that can get skewered, and then we draw Simic Guildgate, and then they don't have any play at all, and then we draw Untapped Source, we Chillbringer, and win. See where I'm going with this? Uh, I don't know if they put a counter on that. At, shoot. Yeah, it'll be a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, they gave it haste? Oh, they give it haste. Oh, they're going to fight? No, you can't fight. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Ah, that's so tempting to get that on, but I'm going to skewer their ram while I can. Not make use of, uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah, and only putting our opponent down to 10 here is not good news. When we need to top deck lands, they can play virtually anything. Big creatures galore coming down. Gore Clan Wrecker. All right, I doubt they give this one haste. This is a double riot, so it's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. All right, 4-4 four, four it is. Ooh, Rhythm of the Wild, our own. Our own Rhythm. Yeah. Let's have a rhythm off. Let's have a dance off, which I think favors them a lot right now. Uh, six mana this is where we start to see the really big creatures, right? 
They didn't play something pre-combat, though, so they still want to block, I presume. Hey, that'd be really good if we drew two more lands. Alright, um, I'm going to have this come down, I think, with a counter so I can attack with the boar. Otherwise, I'm attacking for three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like they have the stupid something to untap, right? No, let's give it haste. We've got to try and race, I think. Looks like plus one counter and untap. Oh no, this... Oh, fight spell. I'd rather them have fight spells than kill spells, I guess. Or, uh, big creatures, I suppose. No, take the damage? What? Say what? I wonder if they just have us dead with something, then. They're not gonna add nine power this turn, though. Savage Smash. Oh, maybe they have Savage Smash. They thought it was instant. That would be brutal. They can't attack, though, if they don't have another creature. Oh my god, my opponent. The cojones on this kid. They do have to deal with two of my creatures, right? Also, I could just randomly play a haste creature or something, so... Let's, let's see what they do first. They've clearly got something. No, Electro Dominance? Oh, <laughs> into a pump spell? So they're going to dome me for five. That gives plus four. Ooh, lethal exactly. Wow, really nice. Very nice opponent. No, nothing I could have done about that at all. They just happen to have it. Electro Dominance is tight. I do like pump spells against other gruel decks, especially if they're going to be playing burn spells. Uh, stupid Steeple Creeper. The Rubble Belt Recluse actually looks fine here. Better than Mammoth Spider, I think. Wrecking Beast has not been working out, though. I'll give you that. I think I just leave everything as is. Maybe a 3 4 is better than, like, Steeple Creeper, though. Get in here, Axe Bane. All right, let's see if we can steal game two here. All right, so game two is up. I'm on the play. I really like this hand, but it does need a third land to function. Uh, the boar and the scorch mark are only going to do so much. Any third land, I mean, a guild gate would be ideal, but maybe a guild gate wouldn't even be ideal, honestly. That is a guild gate. Uh, we are going to play this boar, though. I know it's a little boring. Dirt, 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 dirt. Actually, this card looks, this card's so janky. Oh my god. Untap source? Nope. So, I just scorch mark and attack for two? Probably, right? Yeah. Scorch mark's probably not getting too much better than taking out a 2 2. They could play a haste creature with riot next turn, but there aren't too many of them on three. Most of them are four and above. All right, they have a ram. We're going to have a bigger ram, though. In fact, our ram's going to give this thing vigilance. Ooh, that's kind of good. What do we want to do with that, though? Because I really want to get a guild gate. I'm missing a land drop if I don't cast that. I could also just get a basic. I don't have an island, which is awkward. All right, I'm going to forego hitting a land drop to get in three and get a 4-4 down. Uh, I believe this has Vigilance now, right? Yeah. See if my opponent plays a bigger ram next turn. This could be a play that easily loses us the game, missing a land drop, but we'll see. I could have also skewered this. I could have uh, opens the gate and opens the, the gate. All right, let's see what the follow-up is from I eat soot. All right, Gore Clan Wrecker. Sure, that's not too big of a deal. They can't really attack with it, hence the counter. Nice. So, a couple options here. I can go walk it plus open the gate, make a 5-5. Five five.
I think that's right. I don't want to miss land drops here anymore. I already have. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it. Cast open the gates for Simic Guildgate. And then I'll just pass. This gives us Trollbred Guardian next turn. Uh, I'm not going to trade my 5-5 five five for either of their 3-3, three three, so I'm not attacking. We'll see what their follow-up play is. Got to be kind of weary of Electro Dominance this whole game. If they deal with my 5-5 five five here, that's kind of big news for them. I guess drawing a guild gate off the top wouldn't be the worst. I could tack my 6-6 six, six into two 3-3s. Three, but I'm pretty sure I'm just casting this next turn. Maybe not. We'll, we'll see. Really comes down to what they play this turn. we got to watch out for the plus 4, plus 2 as well. Colossus. Yeah, they're just going to pass with open mana. Ooh, hello. Yeah, I'm not going to... Actually, would I trade this for plus 4, plus 2? Well, let's play that. Can't stop this from being a 6-6. Six, six. Um, there's no point in skewering here. They would have to have multiple tricks here. Would it? They can Electro Dominance for 3, kill this, and then play another thing out? That wouldn't even be that bad. Alright, let's go and put, attack with the Ram. If they want to trade 2 of anything for it, that's fine. And then I'll just play a possibly bigger creature. Kill the Menace thing, I think. See what their trick is. They clearly have something. They just did nothing with their mana last turn. No, we're just going to trade straight up. I like that. Oh, yeah, I guess that that's, that's relevant. I think red-green is going to have a very tough time with a 5-5 five five and an even tougher time with a 7-7 seven seven trample. Ooh. That actually doesn't block a 7-7 seven seven trample, though. Rumble and Ruin. It's another good card to know about, though. All right, so options here. Might as well just jam with the big thing. So we'll adapt this turn and then play Rubble Belt Runner. This puts my opponent down to 8. And again, we're in that range where Skewer might just be able to finish him off. Also, we can probably cash in our locket pretty safely now. Three cards from opponent. Savage Smash would be a beating, not going to lie. Electro Dominance is currently for five, which is also really strong. What a weird card. Count the number of 1-1 one, one counters on creatures you control. Just erase the rest of the text. That should be its ability. When it enters battlefield, count the number of 1-1 one, one counters on creatures you control. That's it. Does it resolve? Yeah, it resolves. Yeah, okay. So we're going for the straight-up Electro Dominance into... Savage. <laughs> what a beating! My opponent got me. Pwn's <laughs> like, eh. Well, now we're not looking so good, are we? One, two, three, four. Dang, they went into Savage Smash there. I'm just going to pass. I'll crack the locket on a turn where I just can't add to the board. As long as my opponent doesn't play, like, another big creature, we're probably fine. Oh, God. What? 
All right, we are not fine, folks. We are not fine. Crack, lock it. One, two. These are basically islands for this turn. Yep. <sighs> I was thinking, draw me another skewer. I could actually win this turn. Yep, I'm just going to... Nope. Pass the turn here. Get bodied by my opponent just playing back-to-back 6-6s. -back six the Electro Dominance into Savage Smash is just ridiculous. Nope, no bucks. You got me. Okay, Rhythm's not the worst thing. Rhythm into Creature would be pretty nice. Gravel Hide. So I can get in 2 damage. Doesn't seem like it accomplishes anything. Play Gravel Hide 4 and pass. You're up. Into a creature here. Frenzied Erring. Great, a Trampler. Awesome. <laughs> I imagine they're going to give counter counter trample. I think my out here is not dying this turn, having a way to deal damage to them, and then uh, skewering. I have to block two of their creatures. They might just leave one back, in which case I only have to block one of them. It's like they're thinking about maybe putting a second counter on it. Yeah, two counters. Do you attack with both your creatures, though? No. I'm not blocking that. Again, I can win with Skewer off the top here. If they have a pump spell, they have a pump spell anyway. Um, I could win with Colossus, maybe? Mm, that's a reasonable card, I suppose. Just activate right away. That does make things very awkward with this because of trample. So that's potential 8 power trampler. Yeah, I do have to block everything this turn though. So I lose all my creatures. No! Wait, does that kill me? Yeah, that kills me. Oh wait, no, because they can't activate the airings now. I do have to block everything though. I could still get there if they attack with everything and I draw skewer. Because I chump, chump, sorrow form blocks this, and then anything blocks this. I have two more of these in my deck. Come on, come on, deck. I think I was actually dead in my opponent attack with just these three. Uh oh, my opponent's doing the thing with the, the, the clicking and the... Alright, so this is pretty straightforward. Block here and then just chump with my worst creature here. Shoot. Alright, opponent got me on that one. We are going to play one more. That was a good game, but we did draw 10 land. So. Also, they drew their Electro Dominance both games. I felt like we were doing great there, but they bombed us. I guess we will see you all in the final match, win or loss. We are currently 4-0, which I'm happy with. Or 4-1. Let's see if we can 5-1. See you there. Alright, we're here for the final match. Oh, man, we... Would actually love this on the play because rhythm is slow, um, despite giving everything haste. Still gonna keep. Uh, we just don't want to be against an aggro deck here. All right, opponent mulling to five might give me some time though. We lost pretty uh, pretty convincingly last match, but hopefully our opponent this time gives us uh, enough time to go ahead and cast rhythm and start playing some fatties. Oh, with haste. 
We are playing against a black deck. Okay, Rakdos Trumpeter. That's fine. Doesn't deal a lot of damage. We are going to open the gates. Go ahead and find... Um, I guess it's right to get Gruel Guildgate. I'll, I'll just play Simic Guildgate. I, I hate giving opponents information like that, because now they have a, know I have a Gruel Guildgate, but whatever. I don't necessarily even have to get my blue mana down. That chill thing hasn't mattered at all in any of my matches, but Chillbringer would have been good. Blood Mist Infiltrator. So this is a 3-1. Um, can't be blocked if you sack a creature at the beginning of your turn. Uh, as it is... I can't block their creatures if they don't want me to, so I think I'm going to go Rhythm here. Yeah, I'm going to play the Rhythm. If I draw an untapped source, I can Titanic Brawl with a 3-drop. If not, I can do it the turn after. So again, I'm going to take some damage for right now. Probably take some damage next turn and then hopefully stabilize from there. Since I, I know for a fact I'm going to be able to cast my spells and play my creatures. Not a bad start from my opponent's mold of five here. No play though. Ooh, Scorch Mark is nice. So why don't we play our Guild Gate and then play a 4-4? Four, four? It comes in as a 4-4-2. There's no ETB trigger, so my opponent can't um, can't grotesque demise this if they happen to be holding on to that. Next turn, I can actually kill both my opponent's creatures and even another creature if they added to the board. But we know they're on all spells because they didn't play a fourth land. Getting in with the 3-1, that smells like a trick to me. I'm going to take the damage here. Do go down to 11, which is pretty low against these Rakdos decks, but I think we're in decent shape. Might even just hold off on playing a creature to keep up some uh, tricks. Yeah, guild gates for days. All right, I'm just going to pass. So if my opponent makes the same attack, I'm going to go ahead and block this infiltrator. Hopefully they use a trick. I can scorch mark in response. It feels like if they had a scorch mark, are they really willing to two for one to get rid of my four four? Probably not. So what could they have? Death Touch? I mean, realistically make the same attack, right? So let's resolve that. I highly doubt they're sacking a creature here. Whoa, really? Okay. I see you there. They sacked the Trumpeter to give this unblockable. All right, cool. My opponent dealt with both of their own creatures for me. That's really kind of them. Into Trumpeter. I'm just going to kill that because I'm going to play creatures for these next couple turns. And this stops them from hitting back. We get to jam for 10 on our turn. Okay. Yep. We'll go and play a 6 5 with haste. Youch. All right, let's uh, go ahead and attack for 10 here. <laughs> and now my opponent's definitely back against the wall. They have not drawn their fourth land yet. We are way ahead. We've got Beastmaster coming down next turn, which is going to double riot. Clearly some sort of trick here. I'm going to play it out. So let's give it plus one counter and haste. And let's go ahead and uh, show our opponent the business here. It does kind of suck though. They bricked on mana, so it's not like doing that much. This is lethal even if they kill this. So I guess they have to kill the 7-4. Bedevil. Okay. That's a good removal spell to know about. That's one of those ones where like, eh, what could they really have? Oh, right. Destroy anything for three mana.
Sweet card. I, yeah, I was going to say, I do think this does it, though. So against Rakdos, we know exactly three cards in their deck. A 1-3 and a 3-1. Did seem really fishy that my opponent sacked their creature there. I like these Brush Striders better than... Uh, where, where are you? Steeple Creeper. And then, again, I'm going to probably cut Wrecking Beast for Mammoth Spider. Um, the Recluse, again, I like a lot worse when we're uh, trying to make sure we stay alive. I think we got lucky their opponent just got mana screwed. But Again, against Rakdos, they have a lot of incidental damage. We want to be able to block a bunch, so we're going to go ahead and lean more on the defensive side. See you in round two. Maybe even a better hand this time. Just the two skewers are going to deal with basically anything they can play. We have opened the gates on turn two, so we're going to have all our colors and know we're hitting our third and fourth land. As long as they don't have a super aggro start, which doesn't look like they do, then we're going to feel fine about this. Uh, they got the brush strider as well. Stride in the brush. Get out there, Simic Guildgate. Alright, so next turn, probably Rubble Belt Runner. Ooh, Rick's Mahdi Reveler. So they have to discard and then draw a card. They're not spectacle in it. Looking for third land, maybe. Otherwise, why discard a 3-1? Hello, that's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, yeah. Gatebreaker Ram it is. I think this card's super sweet. Dang, my opponent has Bedevil and Rick's Mahdi Reveler. They've got Rakdos Rares? What is this? They're going to bedevil my ram? They did bedevil my ram. That is rude. Probably just going to smack him back with Beastmaster this turn. Oh. The Greed. Could also just play a 3 3 Beastmaster. Nah, I'm going to play Rhythm. I'm not under a lot of pressure. I've still got the skewers to deal with creatures. Rhythm makes all of my plays moving forward very strong. <laughs> Plus the Brush Strider is going to basically negate an attack from this Reveler. Might be a mistake. Like if I was playing a GP or something, I probably wouldn't play Rhythm there. But we're playing on Arena. Ugh, Blade Juggler. Very nice, very nice. All right. Oh, Scorch Mark's actually pretty good there. Um, I can't cast two spells, though, so I think what I'm going to do is play Brush Strider and attack if they trade. Cool. If not, then I am going to Skewer their Blade Juggler. And Brush Strider is a creature I'm most willing to trade off here, so this is the one I'm attacking into them with. I don't think they block... We'll go ahead and skewer. Apparently this uh, Blade Juggler was criticizing people, and uh, now he's dead. Just keep my opponent off a bunch of creatures here if I can. Burning Tree Vandal, I assume with haste. Don't really care if it has haste. Land would be awesome. Oh no, they put a counter on it. Neat. Land off the top. Mm, boar. Okay, uh, boar is actually fine here. I will play boar plus scorch mark. In fact, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just scorch mark now. And then play the boar. Uh, I'm actually going to play the boar with a counter on it so I can start blocking this Rick's Mahdi guy. I don't care too much about getting the two damage in this turn. So now my opponent doesn't get to just free roll attacks into me. And if they want to attack, they're either using a removal spell or something on a 3 3. Ooh, Scorch Mark that. Okay. I didn't care too much about that. My best cards are all still in my hand. Uh oh, looks like maybe a Dead Revels. Anytime they highlight their graveyard, I'm going to assume they have Dead Revels. 
That's all they play this turn. That's not the worst, though. Snap blocking if they attack. Hello. All right, I'm going to play this as a 4-4, and that lets me attack for an extra point of damage. Gives me more power on board altogether. I miss out on maybe three damage this turn, but I make up for it by getting an extra point with the boar. Ooh, clear the stage. Well, you don't get a creature back if you don't have a four power creature. My opponent also used a five mana removal spell on a two drop creature, so I don't feel too bad about it. This card was really nice during pre-release. Uh, what am I worried about here? Uh, this looks like they're trying to force Spectacle in on me. If they just Scorch Mark and two for one again, that's fine. Pundit's deck is nice. These are all very good cards, I think. Can't play Mammoth Spider, but we can play a 3-3 Beast Master. Get some attacks in this turn. And I think we have Skewer for basically anything our opponent can play. Unless they have, like, Rakdos or some nonsense. Yeah, alright, we're going to see Dead Revels here, I think. Yep, getting back. Rick's Mati and Blade Juggler. They're not going to play Rick's Mati Reveler. And we get to jam here for 6, 7, 8, 9. They're just dead next turn. Between what we have in hand, I, I can't imagine they have anything that's going to stop us from trampling over and burning them out. Especially they're going down to four. Rhythm of the Wild really pushing its weight in these last couple matches. Mainly my opponent's Rhythm of the Wild, but... So... I don't even know what their best line of play is. They're just... Super dead. I don't even think there's a sweeper they can have. Gates ablaze for one. I think we've got it. Kill the Beastmaster. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh, they, <laughs> they picked the wrong mode. <laughs> They're dead anyway. They picked Carnage. Uh, they were trying to deal one to me and deal one to Beastmaster, but they would have died to what I had in hand instead, so didn't matter too much there. Opponent petered out. We got him. So we get five and one, um, and our loss was to a Gruul deck, so I guess that's almost likely one, right? <gasps> Regenesis. Cool. So I can't complain too much about going all the way with my first deck, um, or at least my first traditional draft deck, and Gruul played out very well there. The power of removal, big creatures. We didn't play against any huge bombs, I don't think. Um, I mean, we lost to a very fair deck that was similar to ours and just drew a little bit better than us. I guess they had Electro Dominance. That was a pretty sick turn. We played against the Gate deck. That was really sweet. Um, all sorts of variety of deck. We just didn't really see Azorius. But honestly, I think Azorius sucks. But we'll save that for another video. At any rate, that's going to go ahead and cut it off here for us. Uh, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed watching, especially if you're still at this point. You must have enjoyed some amount of it. And you can show me you enjoyed it by giving this video a thumbs up. Wink, wink. Or you could just like, comment, and subscribe. Or you could do nothing at all and tell people that you like this video, I guess. Or not tell them. Who cares? Anyway, whatever you feel like doing. Also, I have 10,000 gems. Let's go. So that's going to go ahead and cover us for our first Ravnica Allegiance draft. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. My name is Timothy with Man Rocks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.